Hi guys, welcome to this week's conversation here. Um, let's see, I got the record button hit. We're going to go ahead and kind of make this a user directed uh, conversation. You guys can let me know anything you might need and I'll fill in the gaps by just sharing a few things. I'll start out, but if you have any questions about anything you're working on, you want to share an ad, a landing page, uh, any, any questions you have about getting leads converted, uh, this is the time to do it. I'm just going to show you and make a key point. I see a lot of discussion in the group uh, people lately talking about, and this is always going on, but they're always talking about, it seems like my leads are low end, they're not interested, uh, and I think that's just a really bad <laughs> mindset to have, because uh, you can be, and I think that usually comes from, uh, usually happens when people call and aggressively stalk new leads. There's a there's kind of two camps there. There are people who think that every lead is uh, somebody who should be wanting to buy or sell a house tomorrow, uh, and then there are those of us who realize that people aren't look on your site looking because they want to buy a house tomorrow. They're just on your house site uh, browsing houses. <laughs> and if you if you kind of give them that space to be browsers, uh, a lot of good things can follow from that. I know most of you guys know that, but I've been I just want to address some of the stuff I'm seeing in the group. Uh, I happen to have a very lazy approach to my business. I'm uh, for the past two months. In fact, I've been about a thousand miles away from my market. So I haven't done anything uh, with real estate there other than push a few leads in here and there with some testing I do for, with conversion. But after an initial push for about a month back in May, after I got my license, I put 300 leads or so into this database. And I just want to point out that without ever calling anybody, this is what's happening with the so-called low-end leads that I have. First of all, almost every day, it's been a little slower lately because I haven't been uh, like I said, haven't been doing anything, but but almost every day somebody asks a question about a property or interacts somehow in the database. And right here I can see who's visited the site over the past, well, just today, uh, and they were created 7, 9, 5, 12, 3, 15, 4, April, May, April, 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 when all I did the initial push, and they're still back looking. And 27 properties viewed, this person's looked at 236 properties, I should probably get in touch with her. Uh, he's looked at 111, 149, 176, 262. And I know a lot of you guys see a similar story in your databases, uh, and I just want to bring this up because this is proof that the system works, and that if you do the bare, bare minimum, which I'm going to share with you right now, you can get activity and eventually get conversions. If I reach out to any of these people, they're going to recognize my name, uh, and all I need to do in this group that I'm on the screen here, I know there's a transaction in here if I get proactive and I start sending stuff that would be useful to these people. So let me show you the first phase, the lazy, lazy stuff. So it's 336 leads, by the way. The laziest, laziest thing that I do, let's look at what Cynthia has going on for 236. I get a new lead. I don't call anybody. I don't even worry about it. Um, all I do, no number here, is I go to the activity tab. I mean, I go to the alerts tab, and I set up an alert corresponding to what the person, corresponding to what the person initially came in for. And since most of my leads come in off a of foreclosure offer, I set them up for foreclosures in my county, in, and this is abroad from zero to 100 million, and that is it. And now, as they start to get these alerts every day, I set them up daily, as they start to get these alerts every day, they start to ask me questions about properties. I wish it was more complicated than that, and I see a lot of people wanting to make it more complicated than that, but if you focus on getting leads in and you set them up for alerts, people will start talking to you without you banging your head against the wall trying to force people to want to look at properties. Now, of course, there's something to be said for salesmanship, following up, being cool on the phone. Uh, hi, you know, I saw you on my website. What's up? Can I help you in any way? You know, and seeing if you could pry out somebody who might be more willing to go now and pushing them over the edge. Um, but if you focus more on getting leads into the database and then worry about that part later, you're going to be well served, I think. Um, let's see. Okay. So, uh, does anybody, can somebody just say you can hear me? Um, I don't see anybody talking. Here, just, just just say yes. Uh, thank you, Anthony. All right, so that's like the basic basic stuff. I'm sorry for the little rant, but uh, I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way. I see a lot of stress going on 
over these leads aren't answering the phone and not calling me back. And we all know that real, realistically, if you're under the age of 40, the last thing you want to do right now is pick up the phone when it rings. It's the rudest thing you could do to me is call me when you could just send a <laughs> you could just send a text or an email and I will reply immediately. I know I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's just <laughs> that's just the way it goes. Um, so Shane, um, yeah, so Shane, it's a great question. A lot of people, it does sometimes do it auto, and that brings up another big point. Um, Shane's asking, do you need to set this up daily, or does it do it auto? The system will try to do this, um, but it needs data in order to do it well. And what's going to happen, guys, a lot of times, um, and, and I've asked the guy, I don't think we've done it yet, I've asked the guys to put a note in for leads that don't have any property activity. People will opt into your site, especially on mobile, more and more people are mobile, They'll browse, they'll scroll up and down, but if they don't go into an individual property detail, um, they are not going to log properties viewed, and we're not going to get good alerts set. Uh, so yes, to answer your question, Shane, go in there. You don't have to do it every single day. Um, I had an assistant doing this for a little while, uh, but just go in there at least once a week and just look at your latest leads and run through. It's going to take you five minutes and set up alerts. If you don't know what they came in for, and you don't know what kind of ads you are running, you don't have a hashtag, just do something general. You know, pick your home base um, and do a general, like, first-time buyer price range or choose the foreclosures. It'll just get something out in email that's property-related that people can interact with. Uh, and then from there, you can sort of follow up. You know, another cool thing to do would be to set up the alert if you have extra time and then send an email and say, hey, uh, you know, thanks for being on my site. Just want to let you know I set you up for alert, you know, uh, foreclosures in Pinellas County. Is that is that kind of what you're looking for? Are you an investor? And, you know, you're kind of, being proactive about saying, hey, I just did something for you, uh, and do an open-ended question, you know, is that what you're looking for, and see if you can get a reply. But uh, Shane, yeah, if, just do that. Just get in there once a week uh, and make sure the alerts are configured nicely, and you're going to get huge ROI on the time you spend there. Um, so the point, I, so, so the, again, it, that point I was just making a minute ago, you are going to see people with no activity and don't get upset about that. I answer that question almost every day, you know, in some form, somebody private messages on Facebook or somehow, some way, which is why I want to get a video or a note in here. And what's happening is so much of the traffic is mobile. You know how you behave on the phone. You'll be at the supermarket or something. You'll see an ad on Facebook. You'll be scrolling and be like some properties. You'll click it, right? Maybe you'll opt in, but you'll, you'll get distracted. Like you just, this is the way we are. We're all over the place. Um, and you might scroll up and down, but you don't go look at a property. So it's if you go ahead and configure those alerts, that's what's going to call people back in. The next time they're waiting in line and bored you know, at the movies or something, uh, tomorrow they're going to get an email from you. And they're like, oh, yeah, there's those, that dude with those, you know, there's that property list. Let me go into that site again. Oh, this is cool. You know, and it happens like 10, 20 more times. They see your name. Uh, and then, you know, coincidentally, the guy's fiance starts talking about, hey, let's get a house, you know, a couple of weeks down the line. And there you are right in front of a you know right in front of them at the right moment when the life event happens that triggers the need to move so um uh, yep uh beth says i once sold a home to someone i worked with for five years patience is hard yeah beth true and if you're super super impatient uh like me for sure uh, and you just can't wait to like build your business bigger i've been like this since 2004 i remember being like obsessed with this stuff, reading Gary Keller's book, you can channel that impatience over building your business uh, into the right area. You can choose to obsess over every little lead and try to push there, or you can spend every waking hour trying to generate more <laughs> leads into the database. And I'll, uh, for, I think that's a way more fun way to go. It allows for a lot more creativity. Uh, and a lot of people here, I know there are some really great lead generators, you know, in the conversion Facebook group who share different ideas and things they're doing. There are a lot of people we never hear from who get that bug. Uh, and you get to play around all day generating leads. And then out the other side, you know, some leads come squeaking out, some, some real live <laughs> bodies who want to buy or sell. Um, <laughs> all right, cool. What, what, what's that, Beth? Jeb book? I missed what you were saying there. Okay. Um, so that's just one point about conversion. Um, you know, C-O-N-V-E-R-S-I-O-N. We can convert leads. Uh, bonus tip, sure, if you want to reach out to people. You know, I've got a lot of gold in here that I'm neglecting. Once you see some established activity, maybe you'll come up with your own trigger point and say, hey, if I see somebody who's got 100 property views or more, you can always do that by sorting by the eyeball. And right now, it probably 
uh, would be worth my while <laughs> to focus in on these 10 people, you know, what is it, 30 people, but these 10 people at the top with hundreds of views probably, probably now would make sense for me to try to call them. Uh, maybe not so much the first day before they even know who I am, but at, these, at this point, Yolanda here has probably seen my name in an email a good 30, 40 times that she's going to know who I am and probably going to be pretty, and she won't be rude to me, you know, she'll probably call me back if I leave a message. I'll be almost like, even if it's subconsciously, I'll be like a little bit of a, a rock star for no reason at all other than my name really rings a bell. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, Beth, yeah, Beth's saying she liked the book about fanatical uh, lead generating. It's called, what's that thing called again? I mentioned it a few sessions ago, uh, fanatical prospecting. Yeah, I thought that was a fun read, too. Uh, I didn't even look at his uh, his website, fanaticalprospecting.com. I never even looked at the website. I just saw that popped up. So that's a, like a sales trainer, and his whole thing is, hey, uh, Get get to stirring up the pot, Jeb Blunt, Jeb Blount. He's even got he's even selling stuff. Okay, so um, that's that on the conversion side. Uh, on the lead generation side, the more fun side. I had some campaigns brought up last week. We did carousel ads. Uh, I want to delay a verdict on that. I got some leads, but really something has gone on. I don't know. If there were some threads. Uh, Jim Jim was talking about it. Cavuto was talking about it in the group. Uh, and I noticed the same thing where on clicks to website objectives, everything went sideways w within the last few weeks. Uh, and I've tweaked my campaigns here accordingly, but I was getting tons of clicks, no action. And I wanted to share with you guys some of the tweaks that I made within some of my clicks to websites ads that seems to be uh, working out a little better the last day or two. Um, so let's go here. First thing I want to point out, I'm going to go to edit my ad set. There's a few things that you can do to try to optimize your campaigns. The first one um, is locations. Depending on what you're doing, if you're intentionally running ads to people who are out of town, then sure, you're going to want to pick people who are traveling in this location. But a lot of times, you're probably going to want to use people who live already in this location and isolated to that. So you don't get people who are on vacation or just coming through. Um, the other thing that I'm playing with is definitely, and I, I bought a course, I, I'm in some mastermind groups, but I actually bought a course this weekend. I was like, what is going on? Everything went sideways, uh, and what appears to have happened uh, is that the relevance score is increasingly becoming more and more important, and I had a few campaigns where the relevance score was way down around two or three, and that's where the bad results were coming in. So in order to try to get things going a little better, get a higher click-through rate, better relevance score, uh, I've been working on mobile newsfeed only or desktop only and totally avoiding the audience network. And this is a big tip that I'd never considered before is to, tri to uh, target people who are connected to Wi-Fi, only devices connected to Wi-Fi. And what that does, it, the mindset there is that if somebody is connected to Wi-Fi, that means they're going to be sitting still where they're at probably for a little while as opposed to being out and about on that movie in the movie theater or at the shopping market like I just said and you might have a chance of getting a little more attention from them when they land on your page uh, and they'll take a little more action so only connected to Wi-Fi um, another thing that I don't have here I'm not sure how important this is but it, it does kind of make sense is to put English US so that you're you're not getting people uh, maybe who have been in the country a while, but they don't may read or write English very well. So that may help increase the conversions a little bit or weed out folks who won't be responsive to your ad that's written, you know, your landing page is written in English. Um, yep, yeah, uh, Brett's saying, I'll, I'll, yeah, I had the same, the carousel ads, we were doing great on cost per click, but I was, I'm having trouble, Brent, I agree on that carousel, getting people to actually opt into the landing page. And I can't tell if it's the quality of traffic or what, or something's being lost in translation when they go from the, the carousel button over to the landing page. I mean, I'm trying to match landing page to the button and uh, still not a big success there. Seems like it would work like crazy, though. Um, so mobile devices, only connected to Wi-Fi, and then uh, the next 
big thing is are those placements, not the audience network. Beyond that, you're going to want to focus here. You'll see I got bad results on this carousel. You'll see my relevance score is at three, and I intentionally left the same campaign live and tweaked those things to see if my relevance score would come up at all. Um, you know, not sure if it will. Maybe I should start fresh. But if your relevance score is under six, I'm hearing advice that says you should just try to go redo the campaign or get it up over six to expect better results all around. Uh, uh, Jory, I don't exclude agents or brokers. I don't know. Does that work for you? I, that's a good point. Man, I'm just being lazy. Do you think, uh, is it possible that a lot of agents or, and brokers are clicking? Could be. Have you noticed a change with that? Because that's a great tip right there. And the way to do that, yeah, you just started last week. I mean, the way to do that, I'll show everybody else. It's pretty easy to do. Um, go back to my ad set. Let's see what happens. Uh, so detailed targeting. I'm going pretty wide here too to homeowners. Uh, I didn't do any specific targeting. I just wanted to go broad and pull people in. That might have been my mistake. But let's include homeowners only. We'll assume that they're probably more financially qualified to do a move sometime in the future. And then I can exclude people right here. And then I'll go ahead and do real estate agent for job title. I can exclude real estate broker for job title and then so on. Uh, yeah, it could be. You get a lot of false positives, right? If people are clicking, how many agents are seeing an ad in any given day? There's thousands in the market. Maybe they're going to be responsive because they're like, what is my competitor doing? Yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Jory. I, I wasn't really thinking about that one. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, another tip exclude, uh, take another minute or two to ex try to exclude job titles related to real estate. Now, another thing that we can do, and I've been lazy, there'll probably do a whole session on this, is trying to get your ad to match the audience, to overlay interests. Um, so that has to do with, that'll have to do with uh, the kind of pictures you use, um, the language you use, male, female, and there's a lot more to that, but there's some things you could do, um, and I'm going to use a bad example, but, uh, and, and it's, it's weird in real estate, but let's, just, I don't know why this is coming to mind, but let's just say we decided to run an ad, so let's duplicate this ad, let's run this ad to people who like, <laughs> to people who like gardening, I don't know, so let's, uh, so you might do something. I'm going to paint myself in a hole here. I know it. But let's create ad. I'm going to back out and do something a little easier. Okay, because football season's coming. I'm going to do much better with football season than gardening. So let's go all the way back. And I'm going to try to layer interests. And give an example of an ad that might get a high relevance score. So let's do create ad. Send people to your website. Tampa Bay Bucks <laughs> relevance test. I'm going to see if I can do a general real estate ad, but get higher click through because uh, it, it ties in. Uh, the rabidness, the absolute rabidness of the typical NFL fan that, here. So let's go and we'll do Tampa Bay. Oops. Tampa Bay, Florida. Tampa, Florida. Do within 25 miles. Um, I guess women. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I'm going to do Tampa Bay Buccaneers as an interest. Okay. And then I'm going to do... Um, 
narrow my audience. We'll do homeowners. So we have 68,000 people who are Bucks fans in the area. Twenty bucks a day. Let's do all the stuff I just said. English placements, only mobile. Only connected to Wi-Fi. Okay. Trimming it down. Hit continue. And now, oh, I don't really have a Tampa um, page, but I'm just going to do it. I'll do a real, I'll do a generic page with this. Okay. And now I'm going to do images, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's see if I can find anything. I'm going to rip one right now. Guys, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I'm, get, I'm trying to give an example of overlaying interests or appealing to uh, interests. So upload. Okay. Probably better if I do a home with a flag outside of, with a Tampa Bay Bucks flag in the front yard. Um, you guys okay if, if I – is this boring you or can I do that real quick? Maybe I'll do that really quick. Show a little graphic design how we might go about doing that. So view image, copy, pull up Google Drive. New drawing. I do all my fancy graphic design in Google Drive. Very fancy. <laughs> Insert image by URL here. There we go. And then we'll get a Tampa Hyde Park, Tampa. I'll just pick a Tampa neighborhood. Uh, risk is I'm going to get somebody's house. But just for demo purposes, I'll try to pick a house next time that I know isn't um, here we go. We'll do it like this. I'll grab a street view. This is one of my favorite tricks. A street view of something in Tampa. Oh, Nelly. Where are you, Street View? Usually you get a Street View pretty quick. <laughs> there we go. There's one. Probably have to zoom in more.
All right, guys, I am struggling a little here. What I wanted to do was get a typical street. I should have just grabbed the street I live on in St. Pete. Okay, but I'll grab this like this, and I was going to put the flag on it in the drawing. So I got the flag in there. Then I'm going to insert another image. Okay, right click, order, send it back. And I have the flag sitting in the front of the yard, right? So this is going to kill me. Nobody's, nobody's yelling at me yet, so I'm just going to indulge myself here and get a real address. <laughs> there we go. That I can put the flag in. There we go. Let's do this. That would have been easier to start with. Insert image. So if you do that next time, don't do what I did and just try to go broad on the map. Just pick an address you know exists that's a nice residential home, maybe your own house or some house you sold or something or have listed. Uh, then upload. And then I'm going to put the order sent it back. And I'll have the nice big bucks flag sitting up off the porch there. And that's the effect I was going for. And now I can go back to my ads. Okay, and upload that image. And this is a big point. Sometimes spending all this time on an image might seem crazy, but this is probably the biggest thing you, d you can do to get your relevance score up uh, and get more people clicking. And if you do it with an existing property and something interesting to the person, that might be a nice little formula to use. So uh, I've put Spider-Man on front lawns before. might be interesting to see what happens if you target, target comic fan, book fans. You know, and put the put Spider-Man sitting on the front yard, even if you don't even mention him in the ad. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get an interesting link of properties off of my conversion site to show these people. And what came to mind is I'm going to look at properties with, can I get finished basements? Forget. Can we get finished basements? And are we ever going to get a finished basement in Florida? <laughs> no. <laughs> But, uh, let's see what I can find. Okay. Bombing here today, guys. Um, so I want to build an interesting list. I was going to go for homes with finished basements. That's the northeastern in me, forgetting that Florida doesn't have basements. There's no basement at the Alamo, silly. Um, so <laughs> let's just do new homes. We get our property list. It's only going to be two. That's okay. I'm just going to keep going here. We put in our list. And our headline is going to be, see the list now. Okay. Bucks fans. It's not too late to buy a house with a finished basement so you can watch the game in peace in your fan cave. Uh, and then my headline, maybe I go Tampa Homes with Fan Caves. 
Okay. And working backwards, that might be an interesting niche. What if I did keywords, man caves? So let's try that. So I think a lot of people are putting that in remarks now. It's a common term being used. I wonder what would happen there. Man cave. And there, lo and behold, we have 21 homes with man caves in the county there. So that does work out, and we just uncovered what could be an interesting new niche if you target, um, if you target guys. Tampa homes with man caves with a with a man cave cave, so you can watch the game in peace. And let's go ahead and spell peace correctly. There we go. Okay, and then we'll just, we've got our link in there correctly to the properties, I think. Did I put that in right? And there we go. So what I've tried to do, uh, clumsily, I admit, uh, is try to create an ad that will appeal highly to these people. So I've targeted men who are Tampa Bay Bucks fans who already own a home. And now I'm putting in front of them an ad that says, hey, it's got this picture of a house with a Tampa Bay Bucks flag hanging out of it. Um, we know football fans are rabid. Uh, I know I am about the New York Giants. Anything, I'm clicking any ad that has something to do with the Giants. Uh, Bucks fans, it's not too late to buy a house with a man cave so you can watch the game in peace. I probably should have said Bucks game in peace. All right. Funnier might have been a dude hiding in a room with his wife, like, yelling at him or something. <laughs> That'd be another thing to try, uh, to get a little bit, get a little bit more uh, creative. So what do you think, guys? I know that was very clumsy but, um, and long-winded. What do you think? Are you going to try this out? Let's see what everybody's saying here. Uh, Shane, too advanced for you. So it's not really that advanced. Uh, Shane, we do do a lot of Facebook talks on these um, on these weekly sessions, and these do tend to be a little advanced. I kind of assume people have run Facebook ads before. Uh, but the bottom line is we're trying to make our ads really resonate with the audience. So we're trying to match the audience to the ad and tie it in with real estate somehow. Uh, and there's a myriad, a thousand different ways we can do this. And the bottom line is we're going to get cheaper cost per click and higher likelihood of an opt-in, and in this case, we may even create a need that wasn't there a minute ago when the guy sees that ad and he looks, turns around and looks at his wife and goes, yeah, this house is small. I need a house with a man cave. So you might create some business out of, out of thin air. Um, so uh, Alan's asking, where do, you see, um, where do you see the score before you run your ad? That's the thing. You don't. Um, so what I need to do is I need to let this, uh, run for a while. I need to put this ad live. And then I need to let it run probably for at least 12 hours, a whole 24 hours. And then in my ad stats, I'll be able to see my relevance score. I'll show you where to, where to see that again in a second here. So let's get this live. I think this is actually fairly safe to run after all that fumbling around. Um, this, this ad should be pretty good. The one thing I didn't do, I didn't use the squeeze generator. I didn't add a hashtag for tracking. Uh, to that ad. You guys would have wanted to do that. Um, but let's see. <laughs> That's silly. Uh, so let's see. I'm just going back and looking at your questions, guys. So um, uh, using landing pages in the Facebook groups as well or no? Oh, that would be pretty cool. Um, why not? Uh, I, I don't do much Facebook group stuff, so why why wouldn't you? Especially if you have like a Tampa Bay Bucks fan uh, group that's local, uh, that would be a really neat thing to post, right? Um, you could also, of course, do stuff. I don't really know the area around the stadium down there, Richard James. Um, but if you're in an area like Philly, uh, where you know you, there are neighborhoods where you can walk to the stadium within 10 minutes down, down there on Broad Street, you know you could say, uh, here's a list of homes within 10 minutes walk to the game. So. Uh, you don't have to drive home drunk. I don't know. You know, something like that um, might be really cool. You know, walk to the tailgating party. So 
that alone, sports affinity marketing, almost in every market in the country, there's probably a local sports team we could do this with. And I imagine the relevance score is going to um, spike. Cool. Brent says he gets good return on that. And uh, hopefully this, there's probably some groups maybe we haven't thought of related to sports. Um, so Brent, you're doing landing page drops too, and that does work to get them to, to uh, opt in. He says, yes, sir. So yeah, you would post a, a link to a landing page. Um, you know, in this case, we would have just done a landing page ahead of time. Uh, homes in T Pinellas County, Hillsborough County homes with man caves and then sub headline. So you can watch the Bucks game in peace, <laughs> you know? Uh, so there we go. I'll be careful. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. And joining too many groups can get you flagged. Brent saying, um, and how do you post the landing page in Facebook groups? Well, that's pretty easy. So let's go ahead. We got a little bit more time here today. Um, I did promise to show where the where to get the information about relevance score. So we'll do that really quickly. And then I'll just make a landing page for this so everybody can see that again and show you how to post it to a group. Long and short of it is you're just going to post the link to the landing page. You know, you're going to create the landing page and put the link in. But I'll walk through that really, really quickly. Uh, so let's go back here. Here we go, Tampa Bay relevance test. Here's our carousel landers test. And sometimes you can see it right off, but if you go to performance and clicks, I think it pops right up. Sorry, I have to click through to the ad. So I'm in the ad set, I have to click through to the ad. And then my relevance score is going to be off to the right, right here. Uh, I am guessing, I'm hoping that we see a relevance score somewhere in the seven or eight neighborhood with this Tampa Bay Bucks ad. I hope so. Uh, okay, so this is how easy it is to make a landing page for this idea. Our landing page generator is pretty easy to work with once you get to, once you do a few of them and you get the hang for its little nuances uh, and weirdness that can go on. But um, here's my page. I click landing page, see the list now. My URL after login, um, that's going to be right here. That's the search that I created. So we already did that. Homes with man caves. Man cave is a thing, man. I, I That might do surprisingly well in general, you know, whether you're tying it to sports or not. Um, every guy wants his man cave, and if he doesn't have one, you know, he know, hears his buddies talking about it, and that might be something that gets pretty good response. Um, We'll do here, Hillsboro, Tampa area homes with man caves. So you can watch, can watch the Bucks, Bucks games in peace. And then let's get a cool image here. We're going to have a little fun. Images. Watch the Bucks lose in peace. <laughs> yeah, Brent, you're darn right. You can make noise. It's fine. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, uh, everybody's being quiet <laughs> where, where I am because everybody's being noise. Um, I don't think you guys can hear them. And then, oh, how do you get rid of the pre-printed stuff on the landing page generator? Just double-click it. That's it. Just double click. Um, and then let's do a uh, guy watching sports. I'm gonna Google images. I'm going to do search tools. Type animated. That's not a Bucks fan. Here we go. <laughs> Let's get one making fun of him. So I'll get this one, whatever it is. It looks like a, a funny one. Yeah, Bucks fans don't. They put they put something over their heads. <laughs> Nobody knows they're a Bucks fan. Uh, 
this is taking a minute to load, but what I want to do is show everybody how to put a custom image in the background of the landing page because it's kind of a fun feature. So I'm going to copy the image address here, and I'm going to pop it in the back. Um, and it's better if you try to locally host this image or use a, a photo hosting service, but I'm not going to get into that right now. I'll just show you how to how to do it. So I'll go background, and I'm going to put my custom background right here. I can put the image in like this. <laughs> this actually came out pretty cool looking. Uh, and then I kind of want it bigger. So you can watch the Bucks game without everyone knowing you're a Bucks fan. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> so we can have a little fun with this, um, and the more fun you can have, and the you know the more you know, you know your audience, who's going to see this, they'll probably laugh. And uh, maybe maybe if you can be a little funny, they'll share it with a friend. We got the cool background, the guy with the bags over his bag over his head, and we'll hit save. And then this URL right here. Now I'm, I'm tempted; I might switch my ad. This is the kind of thing that can accidentally. Uh, go viral right here. So, uh, and you can repeat this for any sports team if you want. So, and then this link is what you would take and just post it. We'll post it to the conversion group right now. Okay. Conversion, facebook.com. Annalisa always posts her examples. I'm going to post one. I always forget to do that. So let's post our example here. Landing page page example, example from conversation, target equals bucks fans, trying to get that relevance score up, and then we'll paste it, and that's all I do, I just pop my um, URL in, and you see what happened, it didn't put an image of the page in there, uh, but if I wanted to, you know, if you want to take an extra minute, you can always upload a, a photo if you want. So I could screenshot this. If you want to take an extra minute when you're posting to your groups, you know, um, take a screenshot or upload the photo manually if it doesn't get the thumbnail for you. We get that question a lot, uh, and I know it takes a little extra effort, but, you know, it's only another second to upload an image, right? It's a minor inconvenience, so uh, I'll just do that. You know, do a screenshot of your landing page or grab the image you used, and it's as easy as that. And if you post to three to five groups, word on the street is, is that you can actually get some leads that way. Okay. Um, good point. Brent says uh, post to your business page and then share to different groups. Cool. So put the content on your business page with the photo you want to use, uh, and then it'll be quicker to share it to the different groups. Thanks, Brent. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So um, anybody have any questions that I missed? You want to post it again? What's everybody think? You're going to go give this a shot. Uh, I'll try to let you know tomorrow if this worked. Sorry that the carousel thing we tried last week didn't do great, um, but I bet, I bet if we pay a little more attention uh, to making that a little more relevant to the audience, it will, and I'll, I'll keep working on that. And I'll just remind everybody, we are complicating things a little bit. The foreclosure stuff continues to just kill it in every market around the country. Uh, without fail, it's almost scary. Uh, both me and my brother, who runs a lot of conversions ads, uh, we're talking about it today. Um, just, just over and over again, I'll drop the link again. This very process is a clear path uh, to leads and to people interacting with you over text. So I'll send that to everybody. Oops, I don't know if I sent that to Brent only accidentally or not. Let's see who's the last person talking. Let's try that again. Send to all. Okay. All right, guys. Well, um, yeah, I was just saying that the uh, foreclosure Zapier process, I just dropped a link, is working really well in every market. You know, we can get creative with different angles and everything else, but this has been a, the bread and butter, some variation of a foreclosure 
or deals or motivated buyers uh, a lot of times is what's going to get the most get you the cheapest lead so okay guys is there anything else or uh, are we good to go for today just give you a second if not I'll get this recording up as soon as possible probably tomorrow morning and uh, again these recordings can be found on the facebook.com slash conversion page in the Facebook group and if you google conversations playlist conversations playlist I should probably just make a URL because it'll be easier to say but if you do conversations playlist it'll be the top thing that pops up uh, and you can you can watch all of these in order okay guys have a great day and uh, that's about it stay cool if you can it's blazing some parts of the country see you guys later